Okay, we're going to be going over number five on 6.4 practice here. Now, the thing is, I've done these uh, very similar examples for our numbers three and four here. If you follow those videos, you'll probably find that I'm using very similar strategies. The only difference in this case is I'm going counterclockwise 90 degrees. Now, remember, counterclockwise is the way that against the way you would see a typical clock go. So I'm going to be heading in this direction. Now, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use my knowledge of perpendicular lines here, because that'll make this a little bit easier, a little less work. I'm just going to draw a line from where I'm rotating to the point I am rotating. So I'm rotating it from here. I'm just going to draw that line, and then I'm going to take a look at the slope I have here. I have a slope here of m equals negative 3 fourths. Okay, so now if I want to do a 90 degree rotation, there are a few ways I can do this. I can do this using the math plugging in some values, which would mean subtracting the rotation point, performing the rules, adding it back in, a lot of steps. Or I can go with the fact that I know that perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So if I want to create a perpendicular line for a line of negative 3 over 4, I know that that line would have a slope of positive 4 over 3. So I'm going to go from my center of rotation here. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. And I've got my new point. That's it. Got my 90 degree angle. Went 90 degrees counterclockwise. Awesome. So I'm done with that part of this. Now, to create my 180 degree rotation, the cool thing is about the 180 degree rotations, it's all about straight lines. So if I'm going here, right? I'm going from here. I want to go 180 degrees. All I got to do is extend my line. So. I'm going to just go with my slope here of negative 3 over 4. Instead, I'm going to go up 3, and then I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's it. I've just rotated it. And I've got P... Oh, excuse me, that would be P2, and this one would be P1. It's okay. Quick fix. But hopefully you get the idea here. It's not that bad. You can do the math behind it. It will take you a little bit of time, but you can do it. I think this way is a little bit easier. So the key is just to remember that perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals, just like so. Hopefully this helps.